I'm Mark Blevis, Director of Public Affairs and Marketing with uh, the National Office of Commissioners. Today we have Stephen Grant, a Risk and Resilience Specialist with the Nova Scotia Division. Prior to joining Commissioners, Stephen served with the RCMP for 35 years, his last role being Operations uh, Officer, K Division Traffic Services. Today, Stephen's going to be sharing five security, uh, important security considerations as businesses reopen in the wake of the first wave of the COVID pandemic. If you have any questions for Stephen during his presentation, please send them to our meeting organizer, Lisa Dion. Wave, Lisa. <laughs> uh, Stephen, over to you, sir. Thank you. And greetings from Nova Scotia. Businesses are beginning to reopen across the country, and that's a good thing for all of us. It's an opportunity also to reassess security capabilities and promote a security conscious environment. During the COVID crisis, unscrupulous individuals took advantage of the disorder caused by social isolation and evolving work environments. As we move forward, can we expect more of the same? I think the simple answer is a very likely it is so that we will have more problems. And I say that because, well, we're a little bit rusty. Uh, my wife and I like to look after things locally and, and shop here and, and go to restaurants. And we were kind of lucky here in Nova Scotia that we opened a little faster than most places. But what we noticed <clears throat> was that a lot of people struggled. Uh, service was a little slower. Uh, the cooking part was uh, a little bit behind. It was basically that people felt a little bit overwhelmed by what was going on. And I think there may be some tendency for that to happen here as well. So what I offer today is a few suggestions on what to concentrate as we reopen. Cybersecurity, this is something which I think most companies uh, concentrate a lot of the resources on, and justly so. Uh, it's, it's protecting your intellectual property, and uh, that's a lot of what your business is all about. In, I think around the, the long weekend in May, we usually make an effort to change all the smoke detectors, uh, batteries uh, in our house. And I suggest that this is a good time to, to look at things like that as well. So it may be time to switch up uh, passwords, to educate staff uh, as to security risks, and conduct some tests. Some very forward uh, businesses that I've dealt with actually uh, set up different uh, scenarios and plans so that the people are regularly tested to ensure that they're capable of recognizing potential threats and shutting down as fast as possible. Fiscal security. Um, things that need to be looked at are, uh, for example, alarms. Uh, alarms, uh, if they're still functional, it's been a while. Consider the fact that your business may have been closed down now for several months now. So check and see if those are still operational. Same with security cameras. Security cameras uh, possibly need to be looked at in terms of an upgrade. Lighting both within the business and outside of it as well, uh, whether or not those are in, in good repair and condition. Conditions for uh, regards to gates and fences. If you have those around your property, make sure they're in good repair. Gates don't always keep people out, but damaged gates that people can access don't keep anybody out at all. Graffiti, graffiti can mean a lot of different things. Uh, it can suggest uh, anything ranging from uh, criminal activity, identifying uh, gang-related uh, actions within a community, to simply street art. Uh, but most fall in between, and they're just simply insight, or not particularly sight, uh, attractive. So I recommend that basically you, you look at removing graffiti and also any trash that may be lying around the properties. One of the things we're very proud of in uh, Nova Scotia uh, with our commissioners has been our response to the pandemic crisis here. Uh, I think we were very much on the forefront of, of dealing with that. In many cases, we actually even replaced some competitors who perhaps weren't as attuned and, and, and ready to deal with some of the, the difficulties that we did here. Um, certainly, some of the things which we faced and, and dealt with was providing thorough scanning uh, for taking temperatures of people and also developing forums for uh, checking people within uh, coming into the, the offices, not only staff, but visitors and uh, clients. So uh, I think we were very effective on that and, and we're very proud of that effort. 
If you take nothing more from this uh, presentation, uh, think about access control. I've been to a lot of different places that the whole scenario, uh, security system boils down to a metal key. Uh, you can access things from uh, every office within a building to the factory gates to even in critical infrastructure, not just uh, provincially, uh, but also nationally and even in some cases globally. That's an awful lot to depend on a key. Basically, keys, master keys are the key to your kingdom. So I'd ask you to consider a couple of questions. Who has them, for instance? And has that list, is it relevant still? Uh, have people moved on? Uh, do the, does everybody that has a key actually require one? Can all of them be accounted for? Are spares easily accessible? I've walked into some circumstances where the master key was hanging on the back of a wall where the sign-in list was for everybody that came in uh, uh, as contractors to a, a particular business. Um, that's a risky way to, to handle things. And are they marked for that purpose? In this particular case, master key was written right above it. Basically, this is something which I think everybody has to address. There are, this may be the simplest way of approaching security, but you have to ask yourself, is it the best one? Emergency manuals, they're kind of overlooked until a crisis arises. They're usually the book found in a dusty corner on somebody's shelf or so buried deep within our internet strategies that only the, the sharpest of us know exactly where they're located. Key overall is this is, this is your plan when a crisis occurs and they need to be accessible. Also, I think we need to look at our broader range of contingencies. Everybody has a fire plan for the most part. Bomb uh, uh, plans are, are pretty much the same situation. We all want to know what to deal with in that regard. But consider things like demonstrations. They're popping up more regularly and they're affecting more businesses. Well-focused businesses have plans to deal with demonstrations. Who is going to deal with uh, people outside, whether or not lockdowns may be required. Uh, key points for dealing with those kind of incidents. They're going to happen more often. More commonly, unwanted visitors, the angry individual that comes in to complain. Is somebody appointed and somebody to back that person up in the event that things get uncomfortable? Uh, how do you deal with those particular issues? Terminated employee problem. Again, those are usually situations which are very unpleasant. To have a, a set plan, a checklist if you wish, as to what exactly you're going to do when that individual is, is moving on, including taking away their pass keys, is important. We had a tragedy, as you know, in Port of Pic, Nova Scotia, not too long ago. And I guess the big question here is, what lessons have we learned and have we adjusted how we do things as a consequence of that event? I'm reminded that my uh, granddaughter, who was uh, seven years old, going into the, the second grade in September, she received training on how to deal with a, uh, an active shooter situation when she was in kindergarten. She also was given more training in, in grade one. Our grandson who starts kindergarten will, I assume, receive the same kind of training. I suspect they'll both will be aware of this very unpleasant topic throughout their uh, entire school uh, careers. The question concern I have is the two most important people right now in their lives, their parents, both work and neither have ever received training on, on this particular topic. Most companies have some connection or social media process. Uh, platforms are important. It's a good way to reach out to the community. It's how people basically do business these days. Unfortunately, uh, it's also sometimes a platform for people to say negative things about the company. You need to know what people are saying about you in, in your services. Also, whether or not there's any threats that exist there. You have to ask yourself essentially is, having that kind of dialogue important, to the point where you're allowing too much to build up and, and become problematic. How many people have ever looked at uh, a, a recommendation for a hotel and found negative publicity about it, and yet two or three years later, it's still there? 
you kind of wonder if people are still going to that particular location. Social media has the potential to do great good or great harm. Its influence and power needs to be understood, appreciated, and closely monitored. Some parting thoughts. Are you prepared for a cyber attack? Many companies are. If you're not thinking along those lines, you really need to look into having some specialists address that issue. Are your people so focused on COVID requirements that they are less attentive to criminal activity? The interesting experience is, is to walk into any of the retail stores these days and see how busy their clerks are. They have a lot of responsibilities. Shoplifters notice that as well. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm sure there's other types of businesses that are gonna suffer from the fact that people are very busy dealing with COVID requirements. The old problems haven't gone away just because the new ones cropped up. If someone has a master key that shouldn't, you have to consider what the worst possible outcomes might be. If you haven't done so, you know, or rather if you have, then maybe it's time to consider whether or not a better security model might be in place. Are you prepared to protect your people and your property? Training, training, and training. Do you care what is said and shared about your company on social media? Next to your people, your reputation is probably the most important asset you have. Protect it. Well, I thank you very much for tuning in today. I'd be very pleased to answer any questions. I'm going to get things rolling, Stephen. Thank you very much for that. You mentioned uh, that it's been a while, for example, that we've tested alarms or we know that the alarm system is working. Uh, I know that with gyms closed, a lot of us uh, outside of work and, and being trapped at home uh, have been binge snacking and watching our favorite shows. Uh, how often do we need to exercise our security muscles? I think you should probably set it up as a as a time uh, of set a periodical date for change, just like you do with smoke uh, detectors or alarms. Of course, if something's breaking down, then you need to act and act right away. Uh, these are sometimes things that seem to get fall off the shelf here. I've been to a number of different companies that I'll go to do an inspection. They said, well, yeah, I know that camera isn't working. Well, how long has it not been working? Well, six months. And what's the point of having it? You need to address these things right away. Uh, is, is having an emergency manual enough? You, you, know, you spent some time talking about the importance of an emergency man, manual and some of the considerations, but are, are businesses overlooking anything in preparing and maintaining a manual? I think that may be partially true. Again, it, it depends on specific incidents. I think the key overall is if, if you address a, a broader range of potential scenarios, the key is, is the due training. Uh, it doesn't take an awful lot of time. Usually once a year, everybody trips out of the business and stands at a particular point when they have a fire alarm. But is there other things that they need to address and consider? Uh, as I mentioned, demonstrations. Uh, I've, I've seen some companies that did a, an excellent job because they recognized there was going to be potential risk and problems and knew how to address it, had specific individuals that were trained to, to deal with those issues. So we need to look at a broader range of possibilities. I've heard extended closures uh, have led to an increase in break-ins, and you mentioned graffiti, for example. Is there something business owners should consider with regard to site and personnel security for off hours? You know, we, we all know that the importance of posting when we're open, uh, but that's also a broadcast of when we're not around. Um, and certainly after an extended period uh, of, of unsupervised workplaces, um, you know, the vulnerabilities might be amplified by the fact that people have had the leisure to uh, case out business locations. So is there something that the business owner should consider um, as they head into this and, and what they should look into in the off hours? A uh, topic which is, I think, very pertinent this time is the situational awareness. Uh, people have an inherent uh, sense about them as to when they may be potentially in danger, but it's important to heighten those things. Certainly, I, I've gone on holidays to a variety of, some cases, unusual places. And when I do so, I think those senses are a little bit more heightened. And this might be the time to kind of amp that up a little bit uh, to, to when you're uh, opening up a business for the day, uh, if, if you have uh, cash deposits to take care of, that, that maybe you switch those times up. Some people even uh, take the time to 
drive a slightly different route, particularly if they have property on them or, or, or money or, or valuables that uh, could put them at potential risk. Thank you very much, Stephen. It's now 12.49 p.m. Eastern Time. Enjoy the rest of your day.